Greetings and welcome to Planet Zoo. This is another game from Frontier Developments, who are also the publisher and developer of another game that we've played on my channel, that being Jurassic World Evolution. This game is both similar and different from that one, sometimes in frustrating ways. Anyway, as you can see, I've already played a little bit of it in the tutorial section, that being like the career here, first steps. And I kind of debated whether or not we should actually do that in a video. But the thing is, it does cover a lot of important things that we need to know if we're going to understand the game. And there are some frustrations in there, at least for me. Uh, they changed some of the controls from Jurassic World Evolution and some nonsensical ways, if you ask me. I know it's a being a little hard there. And there's times where it just tells you to do something, but doesn't give you enough guidance. So the footage that I did have for this, not really going to use it because a lot of frustration came through there. However, I do understand it a little bit better now. So I think we can uh, flow a little bit better. So I think that's what we're going to do, at least for the first episode. We're going to go through the career section so we can learn some stuff and we can see what's going on. And then we'll proceed, uh, we'll proceed as you guys want from there. Anyway, if this is something you want to see some more of, please give the video a like. Maybe say so in the comments. And don't forget that subscribing is always the best way to show your support for a series and a YouTuber. All right, so I'm going to go over to the career section. <laughs> And as you can see, I already have, um, I already have three stars here. Uh, Goodwin House is going to be the first zoo we go to. So I didn't go to the next one because I figured, why don't we just do this again for the first, second time for me. And uh, then we can actually see, um, like I said, the things that we need to understand. So let's do Goodwin House and then we're going to start new. There's actually a lot of talking in here, so bear with me. Ah, hey yo, at Hematu. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. oh, oh, sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> It's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Uh, poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker, and she'll expect you to be too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. Less shouting that way. <laughs> Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma, because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it, and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. Okay, so uh, obviously it's indicating the, uh, the place we see right here in front of us. And as you can see, there are grizzlies there. So let's, uh, let's go on down and take a look at them. Did you know that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus arctos horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year? <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. 
This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. The most important thing being its overall welfare. You'll learn more about animal welfare today as we go through your objectives. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera at the bottom of its information panel? Ah, I think I already so now, did that. This is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. You can also get this view of an animal by simply double clicking on it. Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. All right, I think the lions are. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa! Yeah, the camera's a little bit, um, a little bit different. Okay, I'm actually locked on him. Yeah, so can we stop doing that? All right, there we go. I think the yeah, there's the lions. Of course, the lions, right? Panthera leo leo, or the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride. Although prides of that size are pretty rare. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome. Which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. Okay, I think that one, uh, where was that habitat? Alright, we're going to be getting to that one. But I think there was another one. There it is. All right, right here. As you can see, it's a lovely space for animals, but it's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. Warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. There we are, a pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just click on them and select Adopt from the side menu. Normally the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. The last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. When you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center, where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So, how about you move them into their new home? When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal, and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade center's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. It's in well, the crate. As you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthogs habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up the animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. Oh, nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and watsits all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. Okay, the um, the keeper will come in to feed these, but it's kind of frustrating because it doesn't seem to happen very often, by the way. 
All right. Ostriches. I think that's the one we just saw a moment ago. Yes, it is. All right. This one's not done yet. Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause the game. Just click the pause button in the bottom right corner. Okay, I think that's the single best thing they added. I really wish that was in Jurassic World Evolution. Ah, that's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. Can't put it there. Okay, it's telling me where to put it. Right there. Right. Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. Okay, so I got the bricks going here, so click here, and then here. All right, um... Okay, this can be a little unwieldy, uh, because you know what it is? It puts up sections that are exactly this long. The way, if you want to, like, fill a little area here, you do this, and then connect it. And, okay, now we're going to do it this way. That took me a long time to figure out, by the way, because you, it won't shrink at all. So if you have a little bit, so you just have to break it and continue it from where you want to begin the next section, you know? And... Good work. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. Okay, now this acts a little weird too. Normally what you would figure is that you would grab the glass and then place it somewhere. That's not the way it works. You have to select a section of wall... And then select the glass. There we go. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on. Because it makes them happy. And because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy-to-reach places, like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. Now, before we adopt our ostriches, you should click the play button. After all, if the game's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? By the way, as well as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. All right. Okay. It'd be nice if you could do all these at once since they are just going to drop them inside. See, unlike Jurassic World Evolution where you actually place where you're going to do it, they're just going to kick them inside the door. So I would rather just, you know, send them in there, you know? But I have to, like, put them in a place, which is a little weird. So I guess it's not really designed really for uh, multiple, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, I did the wrong one there. Oh, oh, I hit the wrong button. All right, and... There. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, 
water station and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter so guests can get a really good view of the animals. Uh, let's see. Water trough and feeding bowl. And we'll just put the slow feeder down there too. Ooh. Good to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run at 43 miles per hour? Oh, oh heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> okay. Well, Bernie certainly seems impressed. Did he do his speed camera joke? <laughs> Every time we get an ostrich. So... Now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. Keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals, so they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. Okay, so they wants me to put this here. The one observation that I've had for this zoo, at least, is that the paths that look like this are for the customers. When you do this, the little hexagons here, these are for the employees. That's kind of the reason I was trying to put the door over here and it didn't want me to do that. All right, so let's get facilities. Let's get a you keeper need to hut. You take the keeper hut to get it to connect up to the path. All right, like this, hold in a minute. And boom. This keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings, and it can affect their happiness. Negatively. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops, and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? All right. Now, the reason everything has gone blue is because you're using the power heat map. This map allows you to see what is and what isn't powered in your zoo. So, once you've placed your transformer, you can click in the bottom left to turn the heat map off. Lovely work! Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food, and thanks to where you've put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective then. Bengal Tigers! We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. Okay, so... Um, yeah, as I mentioned here, see this little walkway? She mentioned that you put facilities away from the customers. So I'm guessing that this path here you would use to basically keep the customers away from and put facilities there. All right, so let's see. Where was... Oh, oh, there it is right there. Righty, your next job is to build a habitat from scratch. <laughs> and concrete and glass, I expect. So, go ahead and build it. Just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug. Oh, and don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier. Why? It looks oh, fine. And make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers. Okay, so uh, this is actually a rather large thing, and I think we're going to end on this. Um, all right, so let's begin. The first thing, obviously, we need gates around it, so let's work on the barriers, right? Um, I'm going to get... Can I do concrete? It doesn't really matter. All right, red bricks. We'll do red bricks. All right, I'm going to start over here. All right, and let's do this and this. Oh. Outside, right there. Wait a minute. Oh, did I go too far with the first one? Hold it. Nope. Oh. All right. 
Yeah, the um, the interface at the bottom is too big. I'm looking and I don't see a way of shrinking it down there. It, it's just, it's taking up way too much of the screen, if you know what I mean, right? All right. Now, this is one of those situations that I mentioned. By the way, I have to actually rotate with the mouse wheel, whereas you could use keys in Jurassic World Evolution. I, I look for a way of actually changing the keys, but it didn't work. See, here, this is what I was talking about now. Um, wait a minute, stop right there. See, if I do this, I'm going to have to do this because it won't come up short. The way you handle that is you go out to where you want to be, right? And then you go like that, right? And then we just continue from here. All right. See, it's not just a matter of... Um, okay, stop that. Put this here. It's not just a matter of building the habitat. The big thing here is going to be making them happy. All right. Of course, these guys are not anywhere near as bad as somebody else that would be coming up. Uh, let's see. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do an angle here. I have a reason for that, uh, but obviously I'm not doing that angle. Hold on a minute. Can I do that and that? I can't do I can't do that. All right, never mind. Hold on a minute. Uh, can I delete that one? Good. All right, hold it a second. Let me just rotate again. All right. I wanted to, okay, can I do this? Because I do want to leave some space for a donation box, if you know what I mean. Because it's all about the money, right? Actually, I'm going to have to, um, that's probably too much. Because I'm going to have to do something about that wall over there. All right. It's not like it's my park, right? Um it's ugly, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do it. All right. Now, I want to put the um I guess this is the keeper thing here. So, I'm going to put the door over here. All right. Can I get Yeah, right there, right there. Uh actually I had it a moment ago. I think that's a good lineup right there. Now. Bernie takes safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? <laughs> the way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay then, you should start by double-clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Great, now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Um, there was, uh, hold on a minute. This one? Now you've got all of the perimeter selected, you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards. You'll want to make sure it reaches a height of at least 3.7 meters. I'm going to say four meters just because. Because there's a hill there. In place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. <laughs> Especially as these tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. Okay. I don't think it's I want to put down glass too, you know? So, because I want these guys to be seen. Uh, let's see. Around this area, definitely, right? Okay, so glass. Okay, are you going to let me do glass? Hold on a minute. Okay, it's not... Well, maybe it's because it wants me to do something else. Oh, it wants me to do the donation box. All right, fine. Um, all right, uh, put it like here. 
Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat gate in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. Okay, uh, but nobody can see them. It won't let me do the other thing now. You notice? None of the barrier stuff is there. All right, let's donate some tigers that nobody will be able to see. Animal market. Whoa! Now they're expensive. Okay, it wants me to place them now? How very brave. Whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. Okay, habitat. Uh, feeding trough. Uh, we'll put it here. This time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice, refreshing drink. There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into terrain and selecting the water tool. Okay, terrain, water, calm water. I doubt we're going to do rough water, right? Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitats? Uh... Okay, a frozen blood pumpkin. Do you like that? Apparently so. Okay, and then we're going to get a rubbing thing okay, over here. Okay, it's really starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. All right, so let's put this over here. Boom. Oh, poor Dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. Okay, so... Pretio, click on the terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Okay then, open the terrain editing tool, select painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. Okay, they seem to be happy with that. Uh, they want more long grass? Okay. Or they want less long grass, maybe. Okay, they want less long grass. All right, what about... We'll get short grass in there instead. Okay, they're good with the short grass. Um, see something over there. Okay, they're oak. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, down here. I guess they don't like long grass, so we're just gonna kind of mostly get rid of it then, right? Okay, a little bit more, but there. Um, that corner over there. Right then, all animals need plants and trees from their own biome or continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. To get a perfect fit, use plants from the rainforest and temperate biomes that are native to Asia. <laughs> Although if you have to, you can get away with using just one or the other. The tigers will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the environment tab. 
Now, as you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. You can find all of the plants you need in the nature section, and you can use the filters to only show the types of plants you want to see. In this case, that's plants from the rainforest or temperate biomes. Okay, so nature, filter, uh, temperate. What did she say? Nature? Okay, well, I'll just go with this one. Okay, uh, what do we have here? A holly tree, white birch. How about that one? You like that one? Um... Coverage, plant. Okay, well, what does this say here? Uh, plant coverage is severely inappropriate for this guy. All right, uh, temperate, grassland, tropical. All right, what about you? Temperate. Okay, that's not exactly what he wants. Temperate. Well, we'll try a holly tree over here and see what he likes. Uh, okay, coverage. The plant part isn't going up very well. Maybe we have to, um... Wait a minute, where's plants? Okay, here's plants. No, I got the... Gardening... Here, what about this? Alright, um... Let me try the other stuff he likes. Uh, Bengal... Like this one? Okay, the coverage is going up, but they're, the type of plants that they want is not. Let's go back over here. All right, so grassland, tropical. Is it by biome? Tropi grassland, we'll go with grassland. How does he... How about these? You like these? No, not at all. Okay, we're getting coverage, but we're not finding that special plant that they like, right? Reeds. Can we put some of these here? Like this over here, maybe? That one, went, the plant went up 10% there. Okay. Apparently, he liked, they like that. Okay, it just turned orange. Now we're cooking, now we're cooking. Uh, maybe they like a, just put a little barrier over here. All right, um, I know I made that really messy there. Okay, that one is now green. I think I'm gonna get rid of that one though. All right, so let's, let's select the guy again. And let's go back to terrain. Okay, back to environment. Okay, I still got the plants down. Coverage, though. Uh, animal requires more plant and tree coverage. All right, so if I can find the right trees, that would probably do the job. Unless I just made a whole bunch of uh, grassland stuff. But, I mean, I can't find that much. What is this one? Temperate grassland. Maybe he likes that one. All right, I think, do I have one of those already? Boom! Mm -mm. They say the good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Right. Let's head over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. Okay. I Oh, nope, 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 no, no more trees, no more trees. All right. Is it going to let me fix this place here? Hold it a minute. Uh, habitat. Fence. Nah, it's not letting me do that because what I want to... Oh, barriers, barriers. No, it won't let me do that. Look. Nobody can see them. I wanted to put glass in, but I guess I guess that's not something we're going to be doing. Anyway, I think that's uh, that's a good look. 
Um, I think we can do the rest of the tutorial in a second video. Um, there's only really a couple of structured things that they have left. After that, they kind of say, fix the problems with the animals. So you have to like find all the problems and then fix them. That's kind of interesting. But uh, I think we'll do that in the next video. And like I said, if you want to see more of this, please give the video a like. Say so in the comments, maybe even subscribe. Um, this is a little bit on the structured point. There was a lot of speaking involved here, but I think it was a good look at the situation as it stands in terms of the game. Uh, I am a little concerned that a lot of this is very, very crafted. So I don't know whether or not I'm going to be able to make places from scratch very easily. So I don't really know what direction the game's going in, but you know what? We'll just see for the future. Anyway, thank you very much for your attention. I really appreciate it. And play games, because games are fun. See ya!